This vulnerability was advertised mid 2021 with very fancy headlines demonstrating security researchers had figured out how to combine a drone and Wi-Fi to hack Tesla doors. It was pretty fascinating. So let's dive in and try to understand what exactly transpired. Well, this is a screenshot from CanSec Quest 2021. And you can see the big green on their faces as they demonstrate their exploit and the fancy vehicle with the wing doors open. But what really happened? Well, Connection Manager is an open source tool distributed with most Linux distributions. DNS proxy though is a sub tool within the Connection Manager project that manages DNS connections. This DNS proxy is actually utilized in Tesla cars within the infotainment computer. A little bit of a background on the layout of the electronics and computers within, within the Tesla. We've got the ECUs connected via the CAM bus to the gateway. We've got an Ethernet switch and VCMs connected via Ethernet. And then there's the Wi-Fi and the modem and the VCM, which is reachable via the USB interface. Now, whilst this particular diagram is not necessarily attributable to the original blog, it helps to give a general understanding of the computers that are actually like or let's call it the attack surface of of it of the tesla connected components for this particular vulnerability we'll be paying attention to the wi-fi and vcm interrelationship tesla's auto connect to the tesla service access point if found with a hardened publicly known password this meant attack surface reachable via wi-fi is automatically reachable via setting up a fixed access point and getting within range of a tesla the dns proxy Subproject of Conman was used to handle these DNS resolutions for connections to the network via the Wi-Fi. Therefore, an attacker could feed acid DNS traffic to DNS proxy if they were in range. This is precisely what the drone was leveraged to achieve. It was basically used to get within Wi-Fi range of the vehicle. DNS has support for compressed host names, where a host name will use a backward reference to some off offset in the packet to specify the full host name. So, for example. If we've got www.example.com and foo.example.com, we don't need to repeat example.com. We essentially have one www.example.com and when we want to have foo, we have the label foo and have a pointer that points to the previous entry for example.com. This way, there will only be one record stating the string example.com. Words of power here and words of destruction is decompress. And should I remind you that whenever we see these words, they basically hint to us that attacker controlled impute data will be processed by backend systems. And we should generally be observing for where errors may occur because if they do, then we would have found a loophole of vulnerability in the system. Just as a reminder, I would like to briefly go over the DNS header. I want you to pay particular attention to the field A and count. So we have the ID, we have a bunch of flags, we have the QD count, which is you know the number of question in uh, question records, then we have the number of answer records in this particular scenario, the value is nine, and then we have the name records and then additional records. A quick reminder on how DNS formats the host name, it basically uses a label length prefixed labels so facts first the, the host name is split into labels delimited by the period so dub 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 dot example dot com gets split into dub 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 as a label example as a label and com as a label so in this case each of these labels would first would have their first byte specifying the length of the label and then as we discussed previously if there were a compression pointer that would occupy two bytes and we'll get into the specifics of how compression pointers work later down the slides so just starting out here the number five indicates that the word s l a c k contains five characters the number three in this byte demonstrates that the number the, the word c o m cont contains three characters and finally when we see a zero we understand that we have reached the end of the whole thing this is a Q type and this is a Q class. And then whilst another name record is going to occur. So if you remember where I said that, that, that we should pay attention to 
to the A and counters the number of answer records. The value here is nine. We can see that there are nine compression pointers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And all of them are basically routing back to the first definition of slack.com. From the RFC, in order to reduce the size of messages, the domain name system utilizes a compression scheme which eliminates the repetition of domain names in a message. In this scheme, an entire domain name or a list of labels at the end of a domain name is replaced with a pointer to a prior occurrence of the same name. If we were to check this out in our animation, the pointer then in this case would be offset 0c from the beginning of the header. If we were to count that, that essentially skips the actual header values and then lands us right at slack.com. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the vulnerable code. In a moment, I will ask you to go and check for yourself to see if you can identify the flaw. But first, I just want to point out a few things. Explain the function parameters a little bit. Field count, this specifies, this is actually that an count value that I pointed out earlier. It basically count, states the number of records and answer records that are available within the packet. The start points to the start of the part, uh, the part of the, to the header, to the start of the header in the packet. The end points to the end of the packet. Pointer con points to the current offset within the packet. Now there is a temporary buffer that is actually used to process each name and the as associated metadata. And that buffer is of size 1025. So that's what is referred to here, referred to here as uncompressed. So uncompressed is the start of the buffer. So think like the zero index. Uncompressed len is hard coded value, basically just saying the, the fixed size of the buffer. Uncompressed pointer though is the offset into the buffer where we currently are. So because we will be writing things into the buffer, at this point, offset, the uncompressed pointer points to the last point where data was written in the uncompressed data. So with that in mind, take some time, go through the code and att attempt to identify the flow.